Good morning, everyone. Uh, praise the Lord. Thank you for joining class, um, online students. And, um, welcome to our e-learning students who will be listening to this lecture later on. And also welcome to our in-person students. Thank you all for uh, joining us. Uh, we are studying chapter four of Romans, very interesting chapter. Okay, um, uh, we'll begin. Uh, can somebody lead us in prayer, please? Anyone? Father God, we thank you and we bless you, Lord. We, you're so great and you're awesome, Father. We worship you and submit each one of us unto your loving hands, Lord. Teach us, Lord. Lord, Holy Spirit, enlighten us, Lord. Teach us, Lord, that we may understand your word and live for you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So just a recap, we were, uh, you know, we begin this chapter, or Paul begins this chapter by saying that Abraham was justified by not by his works but by his faith and he uh, quotes the old testament verse from uh, genesis chapter 15 verse 6 where he says abraham believed god and it was credited to him or it was accounted to him as righteousness so abraham received the righteousness based on one thing and what was that one thing is belief in God, that he had faith in God, he believed in God, and no one can argue this because Paul is pointing this out from Scripture. Okay, So he's saying Abraham received righteousness purely by believing uh, and believing by faith and not by works. So he's saying the righteousness that God gives us is righteousness through grace by faith. Okay, then he goes on to say, did he receive it when he was circumcised or when he was uncircumcised? So that is what we studied uh, yesterday. We saw that he received this, that he was made righteous by faith. He received it when he was uncircumcised. And uh, even before the physical sign of the covenant was given, Abraham was already justified or he it was credited to his account or is imputed into his account that he was righteous and he was made righteous by faith okay so it was not by keeping the law it was not by works it was not by the sign of circumcision and he says paul says the sign of the circumcision was a seal of that he was made righteous so genesis chapter 15 verse 6 is when he was already made righteous. The righteousness of God was credited into his account. And Genesis chapter 17, we see that God gives this sign of the uh, covenant, the physical sign of the covenant, which is circumcision. Okay. So what Paul is trying to say that is that the sign of the circumcision that was given to Abraham was a seal of his righteousness okay and then he goes on to say that you know um the reason god gave him why does god give him this righteousness through by faith why was abraham made righteous by faith or the righteousness of god that was given to abraham was given because of faith why was it given to him why did god give it to him Yes, so that all who, because he can become the father of all who believe, that we saw yesterday, okay? Because uh, Abraham is the father of all who believe, okay? So uh, that is what Paul is saying. And in verses 17 to 21, we see the Holy Spirit beautifully summarizing Abraham's life of faith, okay? And we said, why we are saying the Holy Spirit is summarizing Abraham's life of faith? Why are we saying that? Is the Holy Spirit summarizing Abraham's life of faith? Why? Why are we saying it's the Holy Spirit summarizing Abraham's life of faith in verses 17 to 21 of, uh, of Romans chapter 4? Because we said that the Holy Spirit was the one who was inspiring Paul to right okay right this promised into our hearts we need to keep two things in mind okay that is what we ended uh, by looking at that beautiful promise 
that, you know, um, who is this God that Abraham believed? It is this God who gives life to the dead and calls things that are not as though they exist, as though they are or as though they did. Okay, so that is what we were looking at and pondering about uh, yesterday's class, that God gives life to the dead and he calls those things that are not, that ceases to exist as though they exist and as though they did. And we see two things about God. What are the two things we saw about God? That one, one is that God gives life to the dead and um, he calls things that are not as though they are. Okay, as though they exist. Okay, um, and he calls things that are not as though they are. So when God speaks these promises to our hearts, there are two things we need to keep in mind. We said this yesterday, that he's inviting us to believe in him as the one who gives life to the dead. So our situations might seem hopeless, might seem helpless, but it's not a problem to God. So this is something that we need to keep in mind when God gives us the promise. And the other thing we need to keep in mind is God calls things that do not exist as though they do. It's not there, but God says it is there. Okay. So we can tell God, God, we still haven't become that, but God says, I've already made you that. Okay. So we can tell God, God, I'm not strong, but God says, I have made you strong. Say, you can say, God, God, I'm not a conqueror, but God says, I made you more than a conqueror. Okay. So he's calling out to things that do not exist as though they did. Okay. And um, uh, God tells Abraham, I have made you a father of many nations. Okay. This is in uh, verse um, uh, 17. Okay. And as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of whom he believed God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they uh, did. Okay, So um, he says, God tells Abraham, I have made you a father of many nations. But was Abraham a father of even one by then at that time? No, he was not even the father of a child. But God said, I have already made you a father of many nations okay so god is saying you are still not there but i've already seen you there you've already become that so one of the things that we can learn from abraham's life is what we read here in genesis chapter 17 we see god telling him i want you to start calling yourself what i have made you from today i want you to call yourself what i have made you so he tells abraham in genesis chapter 17 from today onwards your name will be changed from abram to abraham and your wife no longer will be called sarai but she will call be called sarah so start calling yourself what i have made you isn't that amazing so one thing that we can learn from abraham's life is god is saying I made you this and you can't see yourself that there or you're not yet seeing yourself there but you need to start calling yourself that or you need to see yourself being there or you need to believe yourself to be there so when we start declaring those things which god has spoken over our lives what god who god has made us to be who god has purposed us to be who god has envisioned us to be uh, who god has called us to be where he has called us to be when we begin to declare that over our lives in the spiritual realm it's already done completed thing okay for god it's a done completed thing but you know in our realm we need to see that to come into fruition we need to see that uh, coming into purpose in uh, uh, see that happening in our uh, lives okay so for that we need to start declaring over our lives so that is what he's telling abraham i made you the father of many nations so you start calling yourself that call yourself as abraham okay so when god gives us a promise there are two things that we need to uh, do god gives life to the dead and he calls things that do not exist as though they do 
That is the first thing that we learned. Okay, we believe that, we declare that. And when he speaks his promise in our life, we, you know, he's calling something into existence that does not exist. And he's saying, this is what I made you. It's not there, but it will be there. But I want you to join with me in faith. So we join in faith with God. And, you know, we see that happening in our lives. We see that happening in our natural realm. We see that happening uh, in, um, in, in, in the world that we are living in. So Abraham had to journey into that which God has purposed and called him to me that I have made you a father of many nations. All of you able to understand? Yes. So how did Abraham journey into becoming that? Okay. Verse 18. Can somebody read verse 18? Verse 18. Who contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations, according to what was spoken. So shall your descendants be. And not being... Only verse 18. Yeah, thank you. So first thing Abraham did was, there was no reason for him to have any hope. Right? Because his body and his wife's body was as good as dead and old and they cannot have bare children. But he just did not have hope, but he believed. Okay? Now, is hope important? Yes, is hope, hope is important. Is hope and believing the same thing? Is hope, believing and faith the same thing? What do you think? It's different, yes. Hope and believe and faith is different, okay? Now, um, believe and faith are the same thing, same root word they have, but it's different from hope. Hope is having a desire for something, okay? You have hope that today you will get chicken biryani or mutton biryani for lunch. <laughs> you know, you just have a hope. Or you have hope that, you know, um, uh, you'll get, uh, you know, uh, a new pair of shoes or whatever, you know. So just a hope that is there, okay. So hope is having a desire for something. But hope is something in the, you have desire and hope for something in the future, right. It's something in the future. But faith and belief is now. It's a now thing. Hope is something in the future. And faith and belief is something of a now thing. It is something that is settled in your heart. Okay. That's why uh, the Bible says faith is a substance of things hoped for. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. Which means I'm hoping for something. Okay. But, by, but my faith is a substance of that. Hope is something in the future. But faith is a substance of that. That means faith is the reality. Hope is something in the future. Faith is substance means I can see that now and here. I believe that I can see that now and here. Faith is the reality. The substance of what I am hoping for. So hope is out in the future. I cannot see. Okay. But my faith is a substance of it. You know what does it mean? Your substance, right? What is substance? Substance means something re uh, relatable. Something relatable, something that you can see, okay? So faith is a substance of that hope that is in the future. So my faith is saying, hey, I got it. It's here. Where is it? It's in my heart. That means I know it's there. It's coming. I can, I can feel it. I can see it. I can realize it. But it's somewhere in the future, okay? So you're saying I have the faith. You know, I got it. It's here. But where? It's in my so there was no reason why Abraham could have such hope. Okay, There was no reason why he could have such hope that he will have a son. But he believed. Okay, Now faith and belief come from the same root word and so they can be used interchangeably. Okay, So if you use faith, it's the same as belief. Belief is the same as faith. So if God speaks a word in your life, even if you have no reason to hope for it, what must you do? You must believe, right? So it says, 
against all hope, Abraham believed, and that is how he became the father of many nations. Okay, that is in um, yeah, verse eighteen. Contrary to hope, in hope believes so that he can become the father of many nations, according to what was spoken. So shall your descendants be. Okay. Are you able to understand? Yes? Okay. So um, I said two things here in verse, um, uh, uh, verse 18. Okay. How did Abraham come to that journey of faith? Or how did Abraham journey into becoming that? The first thing is he, there was no reason to hope, but he had hope. And he, uh, he believed, and that is why he could see things happening. And the second thing is verse 19. So can somebody read verse 19, please? And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb. Amen. So what does this verse say? The second thing that we can learn about Abraham's journey into the faith that he had. What does the second one says here? Verse 19. Even though he had the faith, he did not let the faith be weakened by what? By considering or looking at the natural circumstances. Yes, the natural was there. You cannot deny it. He was 100 years old and Sarah was... 90 years old, that is a fact, but he did not let his faith weaken by considering the natural. He did not focus on the natural. Now, this is teaching us something, okay? What is it teaching us? It teaches us that when we focus on, our, on the natural, what happens to our faith when we focus on the natural? Yeah, it'll go down. It'll weaken our faith. Our faith will not be strengthen it tends to weaken our faith okay and um, but if we prevent our faith from being weakened by not focusing on the natural but by focusing on the promise of god so how do we keep our faith strengthened by focusing not on the natural but by focusing on the promise of god that is what david did says David strengthened himself in the Lord, his God. So when he went through difficult situations, what did David do? He did not look at the natural. He did not look at Goliath. He did not look at the, 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 the enemy who had come at Ziklag and taken away his wife, children, and all of his men's wife and children and burned up that place. He did not even look at the situation where, you know, that... His, his own men were planning to kill him because they were so disappointed. But what did David do? He went away and he looked at the Lord his God. He strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Okay. So for our faith not to weaken, we should not focus on the natural, but we need to focus on who God is, what he does, and the promises of God. God. Remember yesterday I spoke about how we need to look in the back in the past and remember everything that God has done. It should become like a memorial for us. What are the good things, what God brought us out, he, how he brought us out. And you know, that should build our faith. That should encourage our faith. Okay. So um, this is what God did in Genesis chapter 15, right? In Genesis chapter 15, Abraham's faith was weak or strong. What do you think? Look at Genesis chapter 15. We studied that yesterday a little bit. <laughs> Chaya Paul says faith waves. Yeah, we sometimes have our faith waves and our curves, right? Yeah. Yesterday we studied Genesis chapter 15, right? In Genesis chapter 15, was Abraham's faith strong or weak? No, it was a low time in his life. Okay, He thought he and Sarah will not have a son, that someone in his household, Eliezer, his son will become his heir. 
So what, why was um, uh, Abraham's faith weakened? Seeing the natural, right? He was looking at the natural. Oh, Abraham, you know, I'm so, I'm old. Look at Sarah, she's old. So I think maybe this God is considering to have a son through one of my uh, servants, okay? But what does God do? In that conversation with Abraham, what does God do? Ah, where does where does God take his eyes to? Ah, look at the stars in the sky. He said, Abraham, come out from your tent, look up at the sky, and what do you see? Innumerable stars. He says, count the stars. And Abraham couldn't knows he couldn't count it. So he says, I'll make your descendants as innumerable as the stars in the sky. So what was God doing? Turning his attention, his focus from the natural to the supernatural, to the God who can do the supernatural. Okay. So God helped him to put his eyes not on the natural, but on the promise that God had given him. Okay. So what do we do when our faith is weakened? We need to check where our focus is on first. Where are you focusing? Are you focusing on your mountain, your giant, the person who's irritating you, the person who's bugging you, the person who's the thorn in your flesh or your circumstances? Where are you focusing? Are you focusing on God? When you focus on God, the equation just turns. The perspective just turns. Okay? And then you will be able to see things with a fresh perspective, with godly perspective, and God will tell you what you need to do. It gives you the strength. Okay. So I'm not saying, hey, we don't look at the natural. I'm not saying, hey, totally avoid the natural. No, we are living in a natural world. But we need to turn our focus to God so that we can look at the things in the natural from God's eyes, from God's perspective, and then we can see things working and moving okay so we're not denying that things are happening in the natural but we have to look at it from how god sees it and how we need to move forward okay amen any questions any doubts anything anyone wants to say no okay we'll move on to verse 20 can somebody read verse 20 please He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith. Strengthened in faith. Strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. Amen. So he says he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. Okay, just see how amazingly, uh, you know, Paul is led by the Holy Spirit to write all of these things. So, you know, Abraham did not let unbelief come in. The same way, we also have a choice. All of us are always faced with a choice. Either believe or trust in God. Trust in his promises. Trust in what he can do. So, you can either have unbelief or trust in the promise of God. You have two options. Okay, but Abraham says he did not waver in the promise of God. And because he did not waver in the promise of God, what happened? What was the result of it? He was strengthened in his faith, giving glory to God. Okay, now what I'm trying to say here is not given in the scripture. Okay, scripture does not record this, but I can just imagine in my mind Abraham saying, Father, I praise you. I thank you that you have made me the father of many nations. I'm sure Abraham would have said that. I don't see it, but I praise you and I thank you, Father. And I believe that you are making me the father or you have made me the father of many nations. Or Abraham could have said, Father, I thank you that the seed that you promised is mine. It's not from Eliezer. It's not from somebody else in, in the community. But the seed you promised is Sarah and mine. Okay, and that seed is also yours, and you are faithful to keep your promises. And I'm sure he would have said, God, thank you in advance for what you are going to do. Thank you for the son that is going to be born in my household. 
Thank you, God, in advance that I'll have descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as a sand on the seashore. Now, all of this is not there in scripture. I'm just telling you, so don't try to look where it is in the scripture. You know, but it says he gave glory to God. I'm saying, I'm thinking he would have given glory to God in this way. Okay. And all of this happened before the, he sees the promise come into fulfillment or the promise happening. Okay. So all this is the steps of faith, is the journey of faith of Abraham. Okay. And he says, and being fully convinced that he had promised, he is also able to perform. So Abraham came to this place where he was fully convinced or that, you know, fully convinced means there was full uh, maturity. There was perfect maturity, perfect faith that, you know, or he, him coming to that place of being fully convinced of the promise of God, that God will perform what he has promised to do. Okay. So verses 17 to verse 21 is a beautiful summary of Abraham's journey of faith. And it has some very important key things that he did. And this is something that we also can follow. And now all of this is written in scripture, not for just for us to say, wow, you know, how well Paul wrote or how, you know, the Holy Spirit uh, uh, revealed this to Paul or how wonderful about the faith of Abraham. All this is written so that we can be encouraged in our faith, so that we can walk that faith that Abraham walked, that we can believe God to do and bring about things that it does, uh, is good as dead to exist and to, you know, to be revived in our uh, lives. So promises coming true in our lives, okay? So this is how we are to walk in faith. Remember I told you that we're going to learn about how to walk the journey of faith that Abraham walked, okay? So this is how also we can come to that place of mature, perfect faith, okay? Any doubts, any questions before we move on to verses 22 to 25? No questions? Okay. Okay, can we move on to righteousness, my faith in Jesus? So Paul has established that righteousness is through faith. He's spoken about the faith of Abraham. He spoke about the faith of David. He spoke about how Abraham journeyed in his faith, how he came to that place of mature faith, and how we also can walk the faith walk that Abraham walked. And now he's coming to the place of talking about righteousness by faith in Jesus Christ. So can somebody please read verses 22 to verse 25, please? And therefore it was accounted to him for righteousness, now it was not written for this for his sake alone that it was imputed to him but also for us it shall be imputed to us who believe in him who raised up jesus our lord from the dead who was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised because of our justification So verses 23 to 25, you know, um, the story of Abraham is not just for him, but also for us. Because God is giving us righteousness through faith. Okay. And righteousness through faith in whom? Paul is pointing out to whom? Jesus. Yes. He says he was crucified for our sins because of the wrong that we had done. Not because of anything wrong that he had done, but he was crucified for our sins, for the wrong that we had done. And he says he was raised for our justification. What does it mean he was raised for our justification? What does he was raised for our justification mean? Can you use the mic? It means that Jesus is not sinned anything like it's for us, for our justification. I mean, that's why he has raised from the dead. Okay. It means the resurrection of Jesus. Okay, yeah. Go ahead. No problem. 
Ma'am, Jesus, if Jesus could not uh, rise from the dead, then this uh, we like we have doubt. Like, like everyone, he died, he finished, but uh, he did everything for us. So he came out, he resurrection for dead. So it's a proof. Yes, it's a proof. So resurrection is what is a resurrection means that what Jesus has done on the cross, the payment for sin that he has paid, is fully effective is pleasing to the father is acceptable to the father and the sins of the whole world has been atoned for if there was no resurrection it means that the sacrifice that jesus has made was not the perfect atoning sacrifice okay the resurrection is a proof that what jesus has done the atoning sacrifice that he made is fully completely done because he entered the whole, the heavenly with his blood and he has been and you know the, the 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 offering for sin has been made complete it is a full pleasing perfect sacrifice and god the father was pleased with that sacrifice and that sacrifice covered the sins of the entire human race once and for all that is why no more sacrifice needs to be made so crucifixion and the death of jesus yes is important but resurrection is also equally important because resurrection proves that the sacrifice that jesus made is the full for sufficient perfect sacrifice that pleased the heart of the father god that made atonement for the sins of the whole world and the sins were covered once and for all so it means that the resurrection of jesus is you know the pronouncement for our justification so when jesus resurrected for the dead we were justified so the resurrection of jesus is attesting to the fact that we have been justified that we have been made right with god that there is no more uh, uh, anything that is holding us back uh, uh, from relating to god from coming in the presence of god or from deriving from god or from receiving from god so which means the resurrection of christ you know in the resurrection of jesus christ the case the case is finally closed the case of sin is finally closed okay so there is no more you know court case for our sins where we are taken and we are saying hey guilty this is the punishment guilty this is the punishment the case is closed why because jesus resurrected back from the dead and we have been acquitted as you know or declared as not uh, guilty yes you know that we are we are declared as not guilty that we are declared as people who are you know uh, justified means you know god looks at us just as if we have never sinned amen so you can imagine you know in the court you know the criminal is standing there who has done something wrong and there's a charge brought uh, against him and uh, the the judge is sitting here and he's declaring the punishment that he has to pay 50000 rupees for the wrong that he has done and then someone walks in and pays the receipt and said we have already paid that risk, uh, payment of 50000 and gives a receipt to the judge they've already made the payment for that criminal for that person now what does the judge do the judge has no option what does he tell the criminal you are free to go and he bangs it and he says case is dismissed right so that is what happened in Christ's resurrection Christ's resurrection is the announcement for our justification means that Jesus was raised for our justification means that the resurrection is the announcement for our justification the resurrection is the announcement that we have been justified so there's nothing that we need to worry about no charges that can be brought against us because christ has paid all of for all of our sins and christ has been raised from the dead and we have been justified okay so now having spoken about abraham's faith Paul is changing his attention to Jesus and he is changing the focus to what Christ did in order to justify us. Okay. And then we move into chapter 5. So this is a letter, it's a continuing thing. So in chapter 5, you know, Paul is focusing on Christ, what he did, the grace of God. 
and the righteousness by faith. And he's putting this all together in the person of Jesus Christ. So in this chapter, we saw faith, righteousness, and grace in the light of what Jesus has done for us. Amen? Okay. Any questions from chapter 4? Can we enjoy studying chapter 4? Yes. Any questions in chapter 4? So sometimes I heard like people telling they have some pain, they have some issues. They're telling, I'm surrendering or giving this, offering this pain with the uh, cross of Jesus. Is there any... I'm offering this pain, pain to the... To, uh, to along with Jesus' pain, like the, what Jesus has done. Oh. Always hearing this, like I'm offering this difficulty or mm. the pain on the I mean, what happens in the body, along with Jesus' suffering. Okay, uh, what do you think? Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why? Because Jesus already finished. He's that. already paid the price. The price yeah. He's done the divine, divine exchange on the cross. On the cross, He's taken your pain and He's given us His life, right? So uh, we can't say that, but. If you're saying, hey, I'm giving my pain over to casting all my burdens, all my cares, I'm giving all my pain, and I'm receiving the healing that Jesus has purchased for me on the cross and praying that Holy Spirit administer that healing into my life is uh, the right kind of prayer to pray. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Any questions? Any doubts? Online students? No questions? Okay, if there's no questions, no doubts, we'll move to chapter 3. Okay? Oh, sorry, if I have chapter 5. <laughs> I'm just laughing at all the math things I'm doing anyways. Okay, um, so Romans chapter 5. We'll just read that, okay? Um, verses 1 to verse 21. So we have um, five in-person students. Each of you can read five verses each. But I would also like one of our, um, uh, one or two of our online students to read. So can any one of you online students like to read chapter 5, verses 1 to 5, and somebody else can read verses 6 to 10, please? Anyone? Can I read first? Yes, please go ahead. Peace and hope. Uh, therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of glory of God, hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character and character hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Chaya. Anyone else would like to read verses 6 to verse 10? Online students, anyone? When we utterly, when we are utterly helpless, Christ came just the right time and died for our sinners, died for us sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person. Though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good, but God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we are still sinners. And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from God's condemnation. For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of his son, while we are still his enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of his son. Amen. Thank you, Prince. 
Nina John, you like to read from 11 to 15? Yes. Not only is this so, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin, and in this way, death came to all men because all sinned. For before the law was given, sin was in the world, but sin is not taken into account when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from the time of Adam to the time of Moses, even over those who did not sin by breaking a command, as did Adam, who was a pattern of the one to come. But the gift is not like the trespass, for if the many died by the trespass of the one man, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to the many? Thank you. Uh, anyone in person students like to read from 16 to 21? And the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned. For the judgment which come to, came from on offense resulted in condemnation. But the free gift which came from many offenses resulted in justification. For if by one man's offense death reign through the one much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as through one man of one man's offense, judgment came to all men, resulting in condemn condemnation. Even so, to, through one man writer's act, the free, free gift come to all men, resulting in justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered the offense might abound, but where sin abound, abundant, grace abundant much more, so that as sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. Um, anything that you would like to share, anything that you felt no, God was speaking to you as we were reading this. Any word that slept out of scripture just ministered to you. Or you've read this passage before, heard a sermon, God had spoken to you, ministered to you. Anything anyone likes to share? It can be something simple, but you can still go ahead and share. Or any specific words that really spoke to you. Yeah, ma'am. I want to say that, like, when we were studying about Abraham's faith, we we got like maybe there was a little faith, but God was faithful. Maybe He did uh, uh, in that area. If you say we He did against the Lord because God will was different. But God, what God promised to us, He definitely fulfills that. Yes, He fulfills it when. And right time comes. <laughs> huh? The right time comes. Also, okay. When when does he fulfill it? When Abraham. When Abraham when had the faith. Faith. Okay. When he believed against all hope, he believed, had faith. He was able to see the promise come true. Yes. Anyone likes to share from chapter five? Anything that you learned? Thing that you. Chapter 5, we can see that uh, verse 12, death in Adam, life in Christ. So we can see this verse 12. Therefore, just as through one man, sin entered the world and death through sin. And thus, death is spread to all men because all sin. So we know that because of sin, uh, like we went uh, far from God because of sin only. 
so when it all happened and all so now uh, when jesus came and because of his death we got again chance to uh, like meet with god and we got that gift from jesus christ only that righteousness through faith our and through jesus christ only as we can see we can say that jesus was second adam who brought us in life yes from into sin. life from sin yes yeah. so thank you yes um, i feel like how god loves loved us each one of us before we not even know him he made a provision for us uh, through jesus that so i'm thinking about that love which it's very difficult to comprehend okay thank you neena john you wanted to share something uh yes i was just saying the first verse itself is talking about uh because of our justification by faith which is what we were looking in the previous chapters the first thing the first benefit that is uh, being spoken about is that we have peace with god so uh peace with god uh, would be different from the peace of god right here i mean that we that is i think peace of god is inner tranquility uh, which god gives us peace with god is that yeah. it is like the end of uh, our hostility i mean toward god there's always there was always that barrier so it says that having been justified by faith we have peace with god and then also that it would to take us into a standing in grace so uh, now i think now onwards we will sorry uh, sorry to interrupt neena uh, we can't hear you i don't know suddenly something happened and we can't hear you so can you just wait we'll yeah no problem no problem yeah can you speak now uh can you hear me maybe i should have asked in the beginning so can you hear no, me no no we could hear you in the beginning but okay. then after some time we couldn't hear you but now we can hear you yeah okay uh, so the first thing that i said was that as a result of our justification by faith we have peace with god so i was saying that it is probably different from peace of god which is talked about in philippians i think the peace of god which passeth all understanding so this is different in the sense that it's an end of that hostility with god i mean otherwise we were enemies of god and it goes on to say you no know, while we were still sinners he died for us so after our justification we have peace with god and then uh, it probably leads to a uh, god dealing with men on the basis of grace and not on the basis of works and because justification is based on the sacrificial death and righteousness of jesus so uh, that is how god is going to be uh, dealing with men uh, so it gives us a standing a different standing with god now a place of security and uh, then another beautiful verse is that i mean we can glory in whatever we go through uh, because it's going to be developing our character mm. and that amazing verse that uh, you know hope never makes us ashamed because the love of god i mean we we learn so much about the love of god the kind of love that we are but it is so difficult but it said it is poured out into our hearts by the holy spirit whom he has given us just a couple of things uh, there will be more but yeah i'll stop there yes thank you uh, we could hear you very clearly now uh, suddenly it started working <laughs> so i don't know suddenly it goes off suddenly it starts working anyways uh chaya poses i think present time we need to keep checking our faith god is faithful but we also need to be faithful yes yes yeah okay thank you all uh, so we'll begin um, looking at um, uh, studying chapter 5 uh, next week okay thank you all for um, joining class and um, may your faith be built up and encouraged and strengthened even as you look behind and look back and study god's look back at what god has done in your life you see study god's word may your faith be encouraged and strengthened god bless you thank you